let's talk about adjusting journal entries. Sometimes uh, textbooks want to classify them as either deferrals or accruals or depreciation expense, and that may be helpful. I just like to think of them as a device to get our revenue and our expenses into the correct period. One of the first things we have to make peace with is that nothing really triggers these things to happen. For example, when we sell stock for cash, debit cash for 50000 credit common stock for 50000 there was an event that occurred. We sold some stock, we got some cash in, that triggered us to make that entry. Adjusting journal entries often are just a matter of the passage of time requiring us to make a journal entry. So a good accountant will have a list somewhere of adjusting journal entries he or she has to make at the end of every period. For example, let's say we sign a lease for some new space for three months. And the landlord says, the rent is $1,000 a month, but I want you to pay all three months of rent up front. So there's an event that occurs. We write a check for $3,000, so we debit an account called prepaid rent. Prepaid rent, prepaid insurance, those are assets. They increase with debits. Cash is an asset. It decreases with credits. So now June 30th comes along and there's no cash changing hands anymore. There's no actual financial transaction taking place. But we have to remember that we have to use up one third of that three months worth of prepaid rent. So we debit rent expense because expenses are debits, expenses are debits, expenses are debits. And we credit prepaid rent for a thousand. Prepaid rent is an asset. It increases with debits and decreases with credits. So if you looked at our T account for prepaid rent, it now has a balance of 2000 which represents the prepaid rent, prepaid rent for July and August. And we'll make that same adjusting journal entry at the end of July and at the end of August to use up that prepaid rent. A couple things of note, adjusting journal entries never affect cash, and they always affect at least one income statement account and one balance sheet account. It's a similar thing uh, as to supplies. So we'll fill up the supply closet by paying, say, $700. So we'll debit the asset supplies for $700 and credit cash. Supplies is an asset. Assets increase with debits. Cash is an asset. Assets decrease with credits. And, but what we won't do is every time we take a pad out or every time we take a pen out, we won't debit supplies expense and credit the asset supplies. Especially in accounting class, what we'll do is we'll go in at the end of the month, count up how many supplies are left, and then figure out how many dollars worth of supplies we must have used. So on June 30th, we dispatched the intern uh, into the supply closet and asked them to tell us how many supplies are left. So they do an inventory, they discover that there's $400 of supplies left. If we started with 700 and there's only 400 left, we must have used 300. So we debit supplies expense for 300 and reduce the asset supplies for 300. If you looked at a T account for the asset supplies after that adjusting journal entry, you would see that it now has a balance of 400, which is what the intern told us was left. Please note that in this adjusting journal entry, we didn't debit or credit cash, but we did debit one income statement account and credit one balance sheet account. And depreciation expense is another example of an adjusting journal entry. Suppose we buy a piece of, buy a piece of equipment for $24,000 that's going to last us five years. It would be incorrect to book all that $24,000 as an expense in that first month because it's going to last us for 60 months. So what we'll do is we'll debit the uh, asset equipment for $24,000 and credit accounts payable for $24,000. Accounts payable is a liability account. Any account that has the word payable, accrued, or unearned in it is a liability account. So accounts payable increases with credits. Then if we're going to use the straight line method, we're going to write off 1 60th of that equipment every month. We debit depreciation expense for 400 and credit accumulated depreciation for $400. And in the memo section, we might want to show exactly how we came up with that $400 number. And then when we show the world our balance sheet, we will show the net book value of our equipment, which would be the $24,000 that we paid minus the accumulated, 
accumulated mean total means total depreciation of 400. So our equipment would have a net book value of 23,600. Another example of trying to get the expense into the right period would be accruing for salary expense. We get to the end of June and we owe our workers $900, but payday isn't until early July. We still want to get that expense because they did that work in June. We want to get that expense into June. So we debit salary expense because expenses are debits, expenses are debits, expenses are debits, and we credit salary payable for let's say $900. And payable means that it's a liability account. Any account that has the word accrued, payable, or unearned in it is a liability account and increases with credits. All right, let's do one last adjusting journal entry. Let's say somebody pays us in advance for some work. We're not allowed to record the revenue until we've earned it, which nowadays is defined as satisfying performance obligations. Since they paid us in advance, we haven't satisfied any performance obligations. We're not allowed to put that money onto our income statement. So we debit cash for 400. Cash is an asset, assets increase with debits, and we credit unearned revenue for 400. Any account that has the word payable, accrued, or unearned in it is a liability account and increases with credits. June 30th comes around and we want to get all our expenses and all our revenue into the correct periods. So hopefully we remember to check with our workers and they tell us they've done half that work on that job. So we'll reduce unearned service revenue by $200 and we'll book service revenue $200. We'll book half of that as revenue because we've satisfied the performance obligation. The account service revenue is a revenue account. If expenses are debits, expenses are debits, expenses are debits, the opposite of expenses, revenue must be recorded with credits. You must remember this. A kiss is still a kiss. A sigh is just a sigh. The fundamental things apply as time goes by.